It's Tuesday, October 15th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, the U.S. Senate says the right to keep and bear arms. The Second Amendment is now debatable. The EBT card shutdown showcases the dangers of dependency on the government. Then, is the Obamacare website crashing to keep the true cost of socialized health care hidden? And is MSNBC editing footage of the veterans protesting in D.C. to distort their motives? All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight. U.S. Senate says right to keep and bear arms is debatable. According to the U.S. Senate, the right of the American people to keep and bear arms is debatable. Despite two separate Supreme Court decisions which confirmed that the Second Amendment protected the right of an individual to own guns, the Senate.gov website contains an explanation that suggests otherwise. In a bizarre clarification of the Second Amendment, the Senate website reads, quote, whether this provision protects the individual's right to own firearms or whether it deals only with the collective right of the people to arm and maintain a militia has long been debated. That's the quote. So the very body concerned with upholding and protecting Americans' rights under the mandate of the Constitution, the U.S. Senate, refuses to fully acknowledge the fundamental right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. And that's merely scratching the surface. This so-called guide to the Constitution reads like a signing statement for the Bill of Rights, you recall those signing statements under Bush where he would just interpret a law any way he wanted. Well, the Senate has now done the same basically for the entire Constitution. This article only covers the Second Amendment angle. We're going to have more on the other sections which the Senate feels it needs to reinterpret, and those reports will be coming out soon. EBT card users threaten Rodney King-style riots. While some people reacted to the failure of the electronic benefit trading cards system on Saturday by looting Walmart stores, others raised the prospect of more widespread riots if the system goes down for a sustained period of time. They better resolve something because if it stays like this, there's going to be an uproar in the city of L.A. Like what? A Rodney King, baby. All again, right? Yep. That was the reaction of one Skid Row resident, while numerous others took to Twitter to express similar sentiments. Considering that Walmarts were being looted just hours after this EBT downtime, imagine what a five-day delay in food stamps would cause. That's the potential fallout from a U.S. debt default, which could occur by the end of this week. Moving on, hidden messages in new $100 bill. A video blogger claims there are hidden messages in the new $100 bill which warn of future nuclear devastation in the United States. Remember, of course, the $20 bill, which if you folded it over, appeared to show the attacks on the Pentagon and the World Trade Center that was issued in 1998, three years before the 9-11 attacks. Well, now, according to Jonathan Kleck, the new $100 bill contains images of nuclear devastation and day-after-tomorrow-style flooding of New York City. So while some are going to read all kinds of symbolism into this, I see it more speaking to the human appetite for apocalyptic fervor and kind of prophecy pornography. It's in that vein. It's debatable. You have to use leaps of imagination and logic to see it. But there's no doubt that people are interested in this. I mean, the one video from Kleck has got something like 150,000 views. So people are fascinated by the supposed symbolism in the $100 bill. The full clip is on the Prison Planet Live YouTube channel, so make your own mind up. Steve Watson reports on Infowars.com, Obama operatives' anti-Tea Party protest draws dismal numbers. 
an anti-Tea Party protest today at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., organized by paid Obama operatives, drew numbers so small that many couldn't even find the protest they were supposed to be taking part in. The economic action event, billed as an anti-Tea Party shutdown protest, was put together by Organizing for Action, the Social Welfare Obama Support Group. So we saw with the Million Vet March this past weekend, thousands of protesters descend on Washington, D.C., carry off the barricades, as they're known, from the War Memorial, the World War II Memorial, dump them outside the White House. Of course, then we saw the riot cops sent in examples of police brutality, which Rachel Maddow and MSNBC later edited deceptively to hide. And basically that protest, even though it was uh, epic in terms of some of the images that were coming out there, drew basically no media attention whatsoever. Well, this Obama protest is not going to draw any media attention either because basically nobody showed up. Moving on now. Girls threatened with hate crime charges for complaining about transgender bathroom harassment. Does the right of people who identify as transgender to sexually harass girls in public bathrooms trump the privacy rights of the girls being subjected to that harassment? Yes, according to a Colorado school. Female students at Florence High School were threatened with hate crimes charges when they complained about being harassed by a transgender boy in the girls' bathroom. The school ardently sided with the transgender student and suggested that the girls stop using most of the female restrooms if they had a problem with it. After both parents and female high school students complained, the students were told they could be kicked off the athletic team and even hit with hate crimes charges if they didn't stay silent about the issue. And again, this is another example of how political correctness in the name of protecting the rights of a minority, in this case, the supposed right of a transgender student to harass girls in public bathrooms, serves only to violate the rights of the vast majority. Finally, now, this is out of Forbes. Obamacare's website is crashing because it doesn't want you to know how costly its plans are. A growing consensus of IT experts outside and inside the government have figured out a principal reason why the website for Obamacare's federally sponsored insurance exchange is crashing. Healthcare.gov forces you to create an account and enter detailed personal information before you can start shopping. This in turn creates a massive traffic bottleneck as the government verifies your information and decides whether or not you're eligible for subsidies. So why did they do this? even with the knowledge that it would crash the entire system, which, as we know, is exactly what happened. Because they didn't want people to realize how expensive the new system really is. And the quotes out of the Forbes article attest to that. Which, when you crunch the numbers, according to a study by the Manhattan Institute, equates to an average 99% more expensive for men and 62% more expensive for women under Obamacare. So to avoid scaring off the middle class who are going to be paying for all this, it actually appears as though the healthcare.gov train wreck was planned all along. And that rather than creating or risking the creation of an instant backlash, the government planned to boil Americans in the pot slowly by deliberately engineering the slowdowns themselves, enabling the true horror of the added expenses under the new Obamacare system to be revealed more gradually. That's it for this portion of the news, but don't go away because after the break, Gigi Anetta presents Tyranny Watch, a special report on the latest examples of police brutality and TSA abuse. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities.
That is taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.